The double helix DNA structure consists of these two individual strands of DNA that run in an anti-parallel direction and they are held together by different types of non-covalent bonds. And one of the more important non-covalent bonds are the hydrogen bonds that exist between those adjacent bases found on the two opposing nucleic acids. Now, what happens once we break those hydrogen bonds? Well, if we break the hydrogen bonds and these hydrogen bonds hold the two nucleic acids together, then that double helix structure will begin to break because as the H bonds break, the two strands of DNA will begin to dissociate. Now, in a laboratory setting, we can cause the dissociation of these two strands by one of two ways, usually one of two ways. We can either increase or decrease the pH of our solution that contains the DNA molecule. And by changing our pH, we essentially ionize the bases. And by ionizing the bases, we disrupt, we break the hydrogen bonds holding our nucleic acids in that double helix structure. Now we can also heat our solution. So by heating the solution, we're essentially bringing energy into the solution. So we're increasing the energy and we're increasing the energy of the bases and that will essentially disrupt the hydrogen bonds, breaking and dissociating that double helix structure. So in a lab, we can either heat our solution by increasing in temperature or we can change the pH and either one of these will basically break uh, all these hydrogen bonds holding our two strands of DNA together. Eventually we dissociate our DNA helix and we form these two individual strands of DNA. So this is basically the backbone that consists of the phosphate and sugar groups and these colored structures are our bases. And so in this structure, this is the double helix where these are the H bonds holding our double helix together. And when we either increase the temperature or change the pH, we essentially disrupt and break these hydrogen bonds. And so we essentially dissociate our DNA molecule. Now, the breaking of the hydrogen bonds and the subsequent dissociation of that DNA molecule is known as melting. So DNA melting essentially refers to breaking these bonds and dissociating that DNA molecule. Now, the process of melting takes place abruptly at a very specific temperature. And this temperature is known as the melting temperature of the DNA. In fact, the melting temperature of the DNA molecule is the temperature at which exactly half of that double helix structure has essentially dissociated. Now, the next question is, if we have a beaker and inside that beaker we have a solution of DNA molecules and we begin to increase the temperature, we begin to heat that solution, how can we measure in a laboratory how much of the DNA has actually dissociated? Well, one way we can measure the dissociation of our DNA is by measuring how much UV light, how much UV radiation is actually absorbed by the DNA molecule. Now, why is that important? Why is UV radiation or absorbance of UV radiation relevant? Well, because it turns out that if we have that double helix structure, because these bases are too busy forming those hydrogen bonds, they are not able to absorb as much light as the bases in the dissociated form can because these bases here are not forming any bonds and so they're free to absorb that UV radiation. So if we shine light onto this structure here, these bases will be able to absorb much more UV radiation than in this particular, uh, in this particular case because in this particular case we have the stacking of these bases and we have van der Waal forces and hydrogen bonds and those bonds will essentially decrease the amount of UV radiation that can be absorbed by those bases. So how can we measure the dissociation of DNA molecules in solution? Well, it turns out that the amount of UV radiation, UV light, where UV stands for ultraviolet, 
absorbed by DNA molecules increases as the DNA dissociates. So as we shine light onto our solution, as we heat that solution, eventually that solution will begin to absorb more and more UV radiation. And we can plot that on a graph. So if the y-axis is the relative absorbance of light, and because we're talking about UV radiation, that means the wavelength is about 260 nanometers, which falls exactly in the spectrum of UV radiation. So we go from 1 to about 1.4. And so as we increase along the y-axis, more and more light is actually absorbed by the molecules in our solution. Now, the x-axis is our temperature given in Celsius. And so as we go from left to right, we essentially heat our solution, we increase our temperature. And notice what we get from our experimental data. The experimental data basically gives us the following curve. And what this curve tells us is there is an abrupt change in the relative absorbance at a specific temperature value. And that's exactly why we call this dissociation process melting. Because melting describes the process by which we essentially dissociate this DNA molecule very quickly at a specific temperature value. And that temperature value is about 72 degrees Celsius. That's the melting temperature of the DNA molecule as shown in the following diagram. So this temperature value describes this point on a curve. And that's essentially the point where exactly half of those DNA molecules or exactly half of a DNA molecule has associated its double helix structure. Now, as I mentioned earlier, in the double helix, the bases are interacting via non-covalent bonds. And this interferes with the ability of those bases to actually absorb the light. And as we increase the temperature, we essentially cause the bases to break those bonds. And so once they are free, they can essentially absorb more light than before. And that's exactly what we see in the following diagram. So this area describes when our DNA molecule is essentially in this structure, in that form. And this area describes where our DNA molecule has melted, has dissociated. So let's suppose we have our solution of DNA, we heat that solution to let's say 80 degrees Celsius. And what we know is from this graph, all the DNA molecules in our solution will be dissociated. Now, what happens if I bring that temperature back down to let's say 60 degrees Celsius? Well, as I begin to bring the temperature down, those molecules, those individual strands of DNA will begin to reassociate. So they will begin to form that double helix structure. And this process is known as annealing. And it will become important when we'll discuss the hybridization process of DNA. So in the laboratory setting, if we want to actually break that double helix structure, we can either change the pH of our solution or we can increase the temperature of that solution. Now, we know that inside our body and inside our cells, we have this process of homeostasis that takes place. And what that means is the temperature nor the pH actually changes. So inside our cells, we don't change the temperature and we don't change our pH. So how exactly do we separate the DNA strands inside our cells? Because for example, in the process of DNA replication, we must be able to separate those DNA strands to actually replicate DNA molecules. So inside our cells, instead of changing the pH or the temperature, we use these enzymes, these molecules, proteins known as helicases. And what these helicases do is they essentially use energy molecules, ATP molecules, to break the bonds between our bases. And that allows these enzymes to actually dissociate and melt our DNA structure.